Welcome back. In the last segment of lecture 3-2, we are going to discuss tools and dies for sheet metal cutting operations. In conventional dies, punch holder is fastened to the ram of the press and punch is fastened to the punch holder and aligned with the opening in the die block using guide pins. So actually so far throughout this course, we have discussed, we have focused on conventional dies. Here is a punch holder and to the punch holder is attached the punch. And then we have a die holder that holds the die. And this uh, shank of the punch holder that is further attached to the ram of the press reciprocates, so does the punch and the cutting operation is performed. In this case, the sheet is fed from right to left and once the cutting has taken place, punch has reached somewhere over here. And once the punch retracts, so this uh, strip also sticks to the uh, punch and moves upward. So the stripper actually strips the sheet from the punch so that it does not move upward with the punch. And we have the guide pins and guide bushings for alignment between punch and die. So this is the most commonly used type of die. And this is the most common orientation of a, of, of a punch and a die in sheet metal working operation. So this video explains these elements of a conventional punch and die. So there is a punch, die, and a stripper. And there needs to be a certain clearance between punch and die. So again, this is the punch, this is the die, this is the stripper. So this is the position where cutting takes place. So punch has sheared the sheet, the operation has been performed. So this is the die opening. So part has dropped uh, from the die opening and the cutting has taken place. So this part, uh, of the sheet sticks to the punch when it, when it moves upward. So this stripper actually uh, doesn't let the sheet move upward with the punch. So it strips the punch from the sheet. So these are the elements of a conventional punch and die. The second type of die in sheet metal cutting uh, are inverted dies. Punch and die positions are interchanged. And the reason is that the opening in the bolster plate or uh, the bed is too small to permit the finished part to pass through the opening. So die block is fastened to the punch holder and punch is fastened to the die holder. So as the ram descends, the blank is sheared from the strip. So you could notice here that punch is <clears throat> in the downward orientation and the die is in the upward orientation. So in this case, actually the punch is fixed and this is the die that moves and the cutting takes place. So the rest, rest of the elements are the same. We are having the guide bushings and we have the guide uh, pins but the die is attached to the punch holder and punch is attached to the die holder. And this type of die is also very common in deep drawing uh, operations, or the cup drawing operations, uh, where the part being drawn is big. So the punch and die orientation is reversed. Then we have compound dies. These combine the principles of conventional and inverted dies in one station. So workpiece is pierced and blanked in one station and in one operation. The result is great. Uh, the result is a greater accuracy in the blank. So uh, these uh, piercing operations, two piercing operations, and the blanking operation to cut the boundary of this blank, they are performed simultaneously in one station and in one operation. So in a way, actually, we are having two pairs of punches and dies 
uh, that are uh, integrated together. So these dyes are complex. So we have we are having piercing punch in the upward orientation. In this case, two piercing punch, and then there is the piercing die. So these piercing punches and dies are in the conventional orientation. Uh, then we are having the blanking punch and blanking die. So they are in the reverse orientation. So uh, this die is complex to be designed and made, but it, it, it results in greater accuracy and uh, greater production rate. We have progressive dies. These dies perform two or more operations at different stages every time the ram descends. So operations are two or more, but at different stages in the same die. So you, you could say that different dies are uh, installed in the same uh, die. Stock strip is advanced through a series of stations that perform one or more distinct operations on workpiece. The strip must move from first through each successive station to produce a complete workpiece. The part is attached to the strip until the last operation is completed. So here we are having a two station progressive die. So uh, the first punch is the piercing punch. So this hole will be made at the first station. Then this sheet will advance to the second station. So there we are having a blanking punch. So this uh, outer perimeter of the washer will be cut and the uh, final piece will be made. So from second stroke onward, a complete part will be made after each stroke. So this is a two station uh, uh, progressive die. You could notice a pilot here. So pilot is used when the piercing operation is performed first and then the blanking operation is to be performed. So this pilot actually helps uh, to make sure the alignment of the blanking operation with the previously pierced hole. So that is the purpose of the pilot. You, you are having the stripper here again to strip the sheet from the punch. And this is the sheet itself. So this is a simple two station progressive die. And one important design parameter to be kept in mind is that the distance from one station to the next must be the same. And this is called uh, the pitch. So that must be made sure that the sheet moves the same distance after each stroke. Here is another example, but this is a more complex. This is a four station progressive die. So first station makes this uh, circular or rectangular uh, hole. So that is a punching operation. And uh, at the second station, this uh, notching operation takes place. So both these operations are taking place in the first stroke. So first stroke is uh, performing two operations. At workstation one, there is punching. At workstation two, there is uh, notching operation. Then in the second stroke, the same two operations are performed. So actually this the point uh, portion has moved here and this notch has moved here. So the second stroke makes the right end of the product. So mm, this operation as well as this second hole is pierced. So in the first and second stroke, same operations are performed. In the third stroke, in the, uh, the four holes are pierced at the third workstation and in the fourth stroke this cutoff operation takes place and from fifth stroke onward a complete piece is produced. So this is a four station progressive die. So uh, this uh, hole is made in the first station then at second station this notching is taking place then at the third, the piercing, and finally, the cutoff. So you could notice here the piercing, notching, then piercing again, and finally, the cutoff. So 
Here is an example of a, of a progressive dye. So here is the example of a progressive dye. The link for the video is given in the description. So you could notice a long strip that is being fed into the dye. This one. And there are different stations on this progressive dye that we will see in this video. So first operation has been performed and the sheet will be fed to the next station. Of course, it is being fed manually, but uh, in the mass production, this feeding mechanism is automatic. So you could notice the operation that we are, that are being performed. So at every, in every stroke, uh, there is the same operation performed at each station. You could notice that the last operation is a bending operation. So part actually sticks to the, to the fine so that is uh, stripped. So you could see that cutoff and bending operation are actually performed simultaneously. So please notice it again here. So there is a cutoff as well as bending. So that is a combination die in which a cutting and forming operation are combined. So cutting and forming operations are combined. So that is a combination die. So this is the final part that has been produced on this progressive dye. So here is another example of a progressive dye in action. So you could see here the second last operation is, is, a, is a bending operation. And in this case, the last operation uh, is a cutoff operation. In fact, in every progressive die, the last operation is a cutoff operation. In the previous video, we saw that the last station had a combination of cutoff and bending operations, uh, but uh, the last operation is a cutoff operation, either performed separately or in combination with another operation in, in progressive die. So you could notice here, the last operation is the cutoff operation. So the final part is being cut off from the continuous sheet. So this is another example of a, a progressive die. The second last operation is the bending operation. And previously, uh, different operations are being performed. You could notice notching and you could notice piercing or punching as well. Another type of dies are combination dies. In these types of dies, cutting operation is combined with a non-cutting operation. So cutting operation may include blanking, piercing, or trimming, and, uh, and combined with non-cutting operation like bending, extruding, forming, etc. So as you saw in one of the videos that cutoff operation was being combined with a bending operation. So if that is done in a separate die, in a single die, that is called a combination die. So you can find different videos in the description for more clarity on the types of dies. So in this lecture 3-2, uh, we discussed difference between shearing, punching, and blanking operation. Then we discussed with the help of examples, the importance of strip layout to commonly used options for simple blanks, the wide run layout and narrow run layout were discussed. And we discussed the importance of clearance between punch and die opening in, in, in sheet metal cutting operations and how that is applied to determine the size of the punch and die. We discussed how to calculate cutting force and which factors it depends upon. We discussed different types of sheet metal cutting operations like cutoff operation, uh, perforating, notching, semi-notching, uh, trimming, etc. And finally, we discussed types of sheet metal dies 
conventional inverted progressive combination dyes. Uh, so we will continue with this discussion. And uh, these are actually the references that I have consulted to make these lectures. Uh, it is uh, missing actually the reference of Machinery's Handbook. So you can refer to these books for more detailed content on dye design. And we will continue with our discussion. And in the next lecture, we will discuss design of bending dyes. And then we will move to the design of deep drawing dyes. Thank you very much.